Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join together as we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to, to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. A reading from the book of Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law must be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. 
but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told, told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last weekend, on July 4th, my husband Giuliano and I celebrated the holiday by going on a road trip with our friend Leah. 
to be COVID safe, she rolled down the windows of her little coupe as we barreled down the highway at alarmingly over the limit speeds that I understand now are typical of New Jersey driving. Our destination was an animal sanctuary in Northwest New Jersey. There, staff and volunteers care for 200 farm animals that have been rescued from abuse. We were all excited about the chance to go out into the countryside and see lots of green and breathe in the fresh air. And Giuliano was particularly looking forward to the expedition because he'd never had the opportunity to pet a goat. He'd heard all about my previous experiences with goats on church youth trips to Overlook Farm in central Massachusetts. Sadly, the farm closed a few years ago, but it was a service learning center run by the charity Heifer International that aimed to teach people about poverty, hunger, environmental issues, and global cultures. As a newish priest, I chaperoned five groups of teenagers on the farm over the years. While I didn't necessarily love the rustic accommodations or dirty chores like feeding the pigs, it was always a pleasure to see the faces of urban and suburban kids light up when they saw all the farm animals, goats included. I remember my last trip to Overlook Farm a few years ago. On our first night, we were treated to a farm fresh, gourmet quality meal of kale lasagna, spinach salad, and brownies made from beets. It was a meal lovingly prepared with ingredients straight from the farm's garden. I'm not ashamed to say that I went back for second helpings, and yes, even thirds. In part because it was so delicious, but also because I knew from our four previous trips that the rest of our meals would not be nearly as flavorful or varied. You see, in addition to taking part in farm chores and interactive classroom games, we'd be immersed in an overnight experience that simulates life for a subsistence farming family in a developing country. The meals in that so-called global village simulation are enough to get by on with plenty of starch, but they're not the most balanced or satisfying. A plate with multiple colors, with items from different food groups, is a luxury for many. Participants learn over the course of that weekend how much effort goes into producing food, how much work it takes to transform a seed into a salad. Raising our awareness of how others live was one of the primary goals of the program. Empathy was one of the seeds of change that Overlook Farm sought to plant in its participants as part of Heifer International's continuing mission to work with local communities to eliminate poverty and hunger while caring for the earth. Heifer is perhaps best known for its program of passing on the gift, where donors can contribute the cost of a farm animal, and then a family receives the animal, and then the first female offspring of that animal is given as a gift to another family in need. Heifer's mission of passing on the gift began when its founder realized that meager relief rations would never be enough to get war-torn communities back on their feet. And so instead of giving a meal, giving an animal could supply food, material for clothing, aid in agricultural efforts, and serve as a commodity in itself. And originally, heifer used to ship out animals and planes all over the world, but eventually they moved to a more efficient and effective model of supporting local livestock farmers and employing local staff around the world. As their mission expanded from post-war relief to long-term development, field staff not only facilitated passing on the gift of animals, but also began teaching communities agricultural practices like crop rotation and planting companion crops together. Heifer was not just passing on the gift of animals, but the gift of seeds and the seeds of long-term agricultural and economic sustainability. An organization started by Christians, Heifer 
seeks to awaken us to our full humanity by recognizing one another's full humanity and inspiring us to serve one another by making sure that we all have what we need to live a full life without dependence on the charity of others. It seeks to inspire mutuality in the world so that we can all be more fully alive. Today's gospel lesson is also about what humanity needs to live the abundant life that God intends for us. The parable of the sower is the first of seven parables in this chapter of Matthew's gospel. And most of the others are also agriculturally themed. These images would have been familiar to Jesus' audience, most of whom came from rural areas. The word parable derives from the Greek, meaning to throw alongside. It's a method of comparison. When one thing is beside something else, we can see it in a new light. In his parables, Jesus throws his stories alongside the everyday lives of his listeners, giving them a glimpse into the meaning of his message about the kingdom of heaven, the realm of God. In today's parable, we have things being literally thrown alongside as a man takes seeds and seemingly indiscriminately throws them onto different types of terrain, a path, rocky ground, a thorny patch, and finally, good soil. The seeds on the path are eaten by birds. The seeds on the rocks are scorched by the sun, and the seeds in the thorns are choked by them. Only the seeds in good soil survive and bring forth a crop. In all three of the negative examples, there are two common denominators. The seeds are not able to grow roots, and because of this, they cannot survive when they face adversity. Good soil helps protect the seeds and enables them to flourish and transform into abundant crops. How do we get good soil? Maybe the question is, how do we prepare our soil? The Trappist monk and spiritual guide, Thomas Merton, wrote of the parable of the sower, every moment and every event of every person's life on earth plants something in her or his soul. For just as the wind carries thousands of winged seeds, so each moment brings with it germs of spiritual vitality that come to rest imperceptibly in the minds and wills of women and men. Most of these unnumbered seeds perish and are lost. For such seeds as these cannot spring up anywhere except in the good soil of freedom, spontaneity, and love. By freedom, Merton means liberating ourselves from attachment to possessions, people, and outcomes. He does not necessarily intend for us to give up everything and everyone. That's a misunderstanding of the notion of detachment. Instead, we must seek to free ourselves from unhealthy dependence and addiction, whether to material items, people, or expectations. By spontaneity, Merton means an openness to the present moment and our present company, as well as gratitude for the unfolding of our lives in ways that we do not always expect. By love, Merton means entering into mutual self-giving relationships with those around us. This extends from family, spouses, friends, to all the world. Love for our neighbors in the wider community and world compels us, in the words of our baptismal covenant, to seek and serve Christ in all persons, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to strive for justice and peace among all peoples to respect the dignity of every human being. We are nourished in this work by our Christian communities with whom we also promise in the baptismal covenant to continue to share in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in prayer and the breaking of bread at the Eucharist and other meals. In reflecting on the parable, Thomas Merton emphasizes that the sower does not come just once. 
Instead, the good news of the kingdom of God comes to us in every moment of our lives. As he writes, we must learn to realize that the love of God seeks us in every situation and seeks our good. God's inscrutable love seeks our awakening. What causes us to sleep? And what can awaken us? I invite you to reflect on how the cares of the world take energy and joy away from your life through dependence to various things, people, and outcomes. And then to think about how we might all live with greater awareness and openness to the present moment and to those around us. In a short while, spiritually, we, be, we will be fed in the Eucharistic meal that Jesus and the apostles have handed down to us, a meal that symbolizes the power of self-giving love. As we approach the altar in our heart, I invite you to think about the love of God that comes to us through our relationships with one another. And I invite you to think about these questions. How can we, as Trinity Church, be good soil for one another and for our community? And how will we show love for one another and the world? At various points in our lives, we experience all the different types of terrain that the sower encountered in the parable. We are sometimes on a path that is not suited for planting, facing scavengers who are waiting for us to stumble. We are sometimes on rocky ground with the sun beating down on us when we need shade. And sometimes we're confronted by the sharp thorns of adversity all around us. The good news of God's grace is that no matter what ground we find ourselves standing on, Jesus is the sower that comes to us to find us and to nourish us with the seeds of the kingdom of heaven, of the realm of God. The sower throws seeds in every direction, not heeding the cost or the risk that they will fall in the wrong ground. While God's grace is freely given, we can help prepare the soil by embracing freedom from unhealthy attachments, spontaneous presence to the current moment we're in, and openness to mutuality by serving our neighbor and letting our neighbor serve us. As we serve our siblings in Christ, we also help prepare their soil for receiving the seeds of the kingdom. This can sometimes seem like a daunting task, but it's worth remembering a teaching of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who said, before you try to love the entire world, start by loving one other person. You can save only one at a time. We can love only one at a time. During my last summer trip to Overlook Farm, our volunteer guide read us a story. It's adapted from the essay, The Star Thrower, by Lauren Isley. It goes like this. Once upon a time, there was an old man who used to go to the ocean to do his writing. He had a habit of walking on the beach every morning before he began his work. Early one morning, he was walking alongside the shore after a big storm had passed, and he found the vast beach littered with starfish as far as the eye could see stretching in both directions. Off in the distance, the old man noticed a small boy approaching. As the boy walked, he paused every so often, and as he grew closer, the man could see that he was occasionally bending down to pick up an object and throw it into the sea. The boy came closer, and the man called out, good morning, may I ask what you're doing? The young boy paused, looked up and replied, I'm throwing starfish into the ocean. The tide has washed them up onto the beach and they can't return to the sea by themselves. When the sun gets high, they will die unless I throw them back into the water. The old man replied, but there must be tens of thousands of starfish on this beach. I'm afraid you really won't be able to make much of a difference. The boy bent down, picked up yet another starfish, and threw it as far as he could into the ocean. Then he turned and he smiled and he said, well, 
it made a difference to that one. The sower goes out to sow. As he sowed, some fell on the path, some fell on rocky ground, some fell among thorns, and some fell on good soil. Jesus, the sower, shares the seeds of the kingdom of heaven wherever we are. We all find ourselves on unhealthy terrain sometimes, but we can strengthen our soil by embracing spiritual practices that will help the seeds of God's reign grow strong roots. Some of those spiritual practices look like what we're doing right now, church, prayer, Holy Communion. And sometimes it's what we do as a church, like our social justice efforts. And sometimes a spiritual practice can be something as simple as sharing a picnic outside after petting goats. Then when we have prepared that good soil, we can share the fruit of God's harvest of love and grace with others. Working together, we can all farm the good soil of the realm of God. And together, we will grow a world in which all have enough to satisfy, satisfy their physical, social, and spiritual needs. And when we join together to celebrate this great harvest, we will feast and we will have second helpings and even third helpings, not just because of the abundance, but because it will be the most delicious food we've ever tasted, because it will taste like love. Amen. I invite you to join as we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to God. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, we pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the departed, especially those we name either silently or aloud. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, by your grace, in communion with the Blessed Mary, the God-giver, and all our saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Trinity Church's online service. Um, we will, in a moment, proceed to Holy Communion, in which all are welcome to join uh, in the spiritual um, reception of, um, of the elements uh, in remembrance that um, Christ died and rose for us as we share in this communion together. Um, we will be continuing our online service um, throughout the summer, even as we begin to reopen for in-person services. So we sent out a special email earlier this week with instructions about how to sign up in advance um, for those services, in-person services, and with guidelines and different things. If you didn't get that, do let us know so we can make sure you got, get that. Um, and if you're interested in attending in-person services, we do ask that you sign up in advance. We have English services at 10 and 3 for July and uh, Spanish service at five, and each service is limited to 50 people. Um, and in August, we will reevaluate um, opening up our earlier other services, including our 8 a.m. service, um, and uh, we'll just see from there. Um, we also invite you to our Zoom coffee hour, which is now moving to 11.30. Now that the service, uh, we have an in-person service at 10, we're gonna do coffee hour at 11.30 over Zoom. No coffee hour at the church. Um, no social gatherings, just the church service. Uh, so if you um, would like to join in our coffee hour and haven't joined that list already, please do contact our parish administrator, Jill, at jilltrinitynj.com. Uh, I invite you to join us in our Zoom evening prayer, uh, Wednesdays at six o'clock, 
Um, you can email the church office to find out more details about that if you haven't seen that. And finally, I'm happy to announce um, a new offering, our social justice film series, which will begin later this month on July 29th, that's a Wednesday, from 7 to 8 p.m. You'll watch the movie on your own, and then we'll join together that Wednesday to discuss it. And our first film is True Justice, a documentary about the work of Brian Stevenson and the Equal Justice Initiative. And it's available for free to watch on YouTube. So I hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Finally, I invite you to remember the needs of the church and the world, and I hope that you will continue to uh, give generously to Trinity Church as you're able. Um, our website, you can go to that and give uh, a gift online. You'll see the giving tab at the top right, I believe it is, of the website. When you go there, trinitynj.com. And uh, you can also mail checks to the church office. Thank you so much for um, your continued generosity. Let's remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk and love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gather at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made.
in the fullness of time, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us now join in saying together the post communion prayer. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.